Welcome everybody to Stay Curious. I'm Mark Marquette coming to you from the Hyatt Place Hotel Studios here inside the American Space Museum in downtown Titusville. Welcome, Triple T is yeah. back. Hello buddy, a lot of people have been asking about you, so we know you've been under the weather, but we have got a new sponsor, the Hyatt Place. Isn't that cool, yeah. Right over at 405, we're entrance into Kennedy Space Center there okay. beside the Boeing building. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there is the yeah. hotel okay. there that we've made a deal with to sponsor our Stay Curious program. Awesome. In exchange for several events that we're planning, include a 50th anniversary of the Space Shuttle April 16th at this very facility. So uh, you're going to get to know... Uh, Robert and, and uh, Dana that are the manager cool. assistant managers Excellent. over there and we'll be taking the inside and out of the Hyatt Place as we're real pleased to uh, partner with them in some much needed uh, visiting sp uh, meeting space for our museum is very small and so we're looking for a lot of things there. Yeah, that's great. But, that's uh, awesome. But, but Travis, it's great to see you back. Everybody's missed you. you I know I don't look any better but I'm glad to be back. <laughs> I feel better. So. <laughs> Well, good, good. You had a little bout of flu and flu, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it was bad, and I'm I'm still a little weak, sore, yeah. you know. But <clears throat> we don't spring back like the young yeah, lions, not like were, I used to, like the young lions <laughs> we used to be, right? Well, thank you, Marty Winkle, for being behind the the Streamlabs console there here in our Hyatt Place studios. Got us covered. Uh, Marty and I have done over 500 episodes. Wow! And we're going to celebrate that with uh, close to our two-year anniversary, March 23rd is a Wednesday, that our board of directors wants to uh, uh, give a shout out to all of you helping us on Facebook, here on YouTube, Excellent. Twitch, Spotify, and um, uh, of course Facebook, uh, the, the regular vehicle there, uh, YouTube and Twitch and uh, yeah, Spotify, we're also doing audios, video on. Wow. So we've got a nice little program here to catch up with our space shuttles in the air. Uh, Triple T, of course, was the lead closeout crew yep. member in that white room right there. That's the shaky little structure that attaches. <laughs> you see that little donut ring there yep. where the Atlantis uh, uh, words are. That's where they would enter the hatch. And you yep. put astronauts in the hatch there for off and on for 30 years. Yes, sir. And we're going to talk about the last time that you were touched Discovery. Mm. Unfortunately, here was the launch yeah. there. But we wanted to give a big shout out to this young man, Alex Carl. Thank you for a wonderful conversation from Cologne, Germany yesterday. If you didn't watch that Stay Curious program, you, you owe it to yourself to watch it. After all, there's Triple T, there's International Space Station orbiting Earth, right. has four Americans, two Russians, and a German on board. Okay, yeah. Okay. And with the invasion of the Ukraine by oh, Russia, yeah, yeah. Uh, Alex Carl told us yesterday that he got a memo from the, his boss that to all of the, he is a Euro co communicator. They call him Eurocoms. He okay. talks to the European astronauts and other astronauts on the space station, but basically <clears throat> uh, every day there's a team of them that, that go through their experiments and their daily routine. But he said, the, his boss said, everything's going to be status quo. We're an international facility. We, we're not taking politics here yet. But they can close the door on that <laughs> Naku uh, Russian segment on there. Yeah. They have their own spaceship attached to it that they could come yeah. and go as they please. But yeah, they can. thank you, Alex Carl, for a wonderful conversation about his job and about the European Space Agency and the astronauts. And uh, he had this uh, patch. Uh, Marty, uh, the Cosmic Kiss patch that I, I had in, in, in my home. Let me get that off there, Marty. Thank you, sir. This Cosmic, this is the patch that the current European Space Agency astronaut, Matthias Maurer, created. It's based on a 2,000 or more year old uh, caveman drawing of oh, the sky. Oh, yeah, I think it's yeah, over yeah. 4,000 years old. And uh, I didn't know that, Travis, but each... European crew that goes up the space station takes on a name the space station. Right. So. Yeah. That's pretty and neat. And thank you, Alex Carl, for giving me that when he was here in November to see the launch of Matthias Maurer, their European space uh, astronaut cool. up there right now. And he'll be back in uh, April when they launch the next crew going up. Right. 
which I hear is about April 15th, Marty, the day before our big uh, golden anniversary of the shuttle event at the at our new sponsor, the Hyatt Place. It's a fabulous uh, hotel. Have you been in it? No. It's very Art, art Deco looking in some ways. Good. It's got a fifth floor viewing area for space shuttle launches. Really? So okay. We'll go up and, and see one up there. No, we'll yeah, I want to check it so. out. All right, let's get to the meat of our show here, space shuttles. And uh, Travis, there's 11 space shuttles of February, okay. Uh, of course, Discovery being the, the most flown, usually has the most. It was flown four times, uh, OV-104 Atlantis three times, and OV-105 uh, Endeavor twice, and one each for Columbia and Challenger. Total of 106 days in space by wow. these accumulated 10 missions, with 67 people that you put yeah. in February in those missions, including awesome. Janice Voss twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's the only astronaut of those 50, uh, 67 that flew twice uh, in the the month of uh, February. Her. And uh, you remember her when you saved her life <laughs> uh, by catching her when she almost went through that little donut almost. ring thing. We've talked about that, and we probably need to have just a, uh, a stay curious show about that all of itself. Uh, importantly, the 41B was the untethered flight of Bruce McCandless, and then oh yeah, and, and, and then cool? later uh, uh, Robert. Uh, um, oh, uh, who, you never remember who the guy is. With the, the MMU, guy the yeah, man the MMU. maneuvering unit. I can unit. see his face. Uh, one mission to the mirror. Uh, of course, female pilot was the first time a female pilot flown was in February. That was STS-63, Eileen Collins. The last ISS hardware was taken up by the 130 that your girlfriend, Kay Hire, okay. was on there, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Uh, she, that, coupe, that patch looks like the cupola. And then yeah. uh, the second Hubble upgrade, uh, STS-82, was done. Uh, in this month of the year. So we'll talk about other couple shuttle missions. I hope I get we'll, to see Kay again. Yeah, we're, we're, we understand she's moving to the Space Coast. Cool. I wanted to, as I'm looking at this, Marty, and we thank all of our friends uh, that have tuned in today. I know Mark Usiak, this is your beautiful photograph mm -hmm. of the Space Shuttle's Discovery's uh, swan song. It's a good job. Uh, on uh, February, uh, uh, it had been February 24. Uh, 2011. Okay. All right. And uh, unfortunately, the last flight of of uh, S of uh, Discovery, and uh, we've got our. Well, but I did want to say, those of you out there, one of our regular viewers, Professor Keith Sewell, of astronomy professor uh, at uh, Eastern Florida State University up the road here. Uh, had heart stints put in yesterday. He went to the doctor. He went to the emergency room having chest pains. Mm -mm. And though they didn't see, see he was having a heart attack when they did that catheterization, they just popped a couple stints in. Keith Sewell, hope you're getting well, buddy. Professor Sewell, uh, a good guy. He was the first astronomy educator here at the museum awesome. years ago. And uh, so we hope he's on the mend. Take it easy. I've got four stints in me. Uh, a Widowmaker survivor, myself, and um, awesome. uh, you know, you got to take it easy on yourself there, Keith. So get well. Mm. And Marty's going to bring me over so, so we can shout out to some of you watching today. But uh, there's Triple T on the right yeah. in action with <coughs> this. It's uh, Black History Month. There's Leland Melvin. Leland. Uh, we talked about Leland on a show a while back. Yeah. Uh, cool Kerb guy. Kerbeam's in the background there, yeah. Robert Kerbeam. Uh, Robert Kirby said, yeah, he's a cool guy, drafted by the NFL Both Detroit Lions, uh, dog lover. Oh, uh, yeah. We featured them, but uh, you're putting in the light stick yeah. in there to, in case they had to bail out so they, as if that was going to help them. You know, and what I'm, what I'm physically doing is I'm putting the light stick in, so yes, in case they do bail out. But this is my only chance to look you in the eye. So what I'm physically doing is I'm putting the light stick in, but as I'm walking around, I'm looking them in the eye. I want to make sure somebody's home, mm -hmm. that we're in the same room together. Because if, if I see a squirrel action going on, uh, I got a problem. But so, you never did, you say. No, nope, 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 but that was always 
Yeah. You know, part of the job. Someone could freak out and yeah. say, I don't know about this. I'm well, then that's good. And there, I mean, that, that's, that is part of your duties up there. There were yeah. seven people in their white suits there. Look at this white uh, uniform there, real good, <laughs> folks. Okay. And uh, imagine uh, yourself in that, all right? Just a minute. Yeah. There's a, a, a picture of you when you were uh, eating more steak than hamburger. Yeah, I was, I think. Back yeah, then, I huh? did, yeah. <laughs> Not as much tune as I have now. But look at there. We are having an auction a week from Saturday, March 5th, the 19th auction to keep our doors open. These have become an important fundraiser, charity fundraiser for our museum. Uh, uh, these, these items are on consignment. We work a deal with the consigner. This is Travis's yeah. what closeout crew white room uh, uniform that our collection analyst, Chuck Jeffrey, right. thinks should go for at least $2,000. I hope I need it, and uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, so that is available up there in our auction. Go to American Space Museum. Actually, we're posting stuff on our Facebook to link. Uh, right. I've got a link there now, but we also, of course, it's in our events. But go to our website, and up at the top it says auctions. It'll take you to where to sign up, and you can look now at 400 lots, including this lot that is your bunny suit. Yeah, up there, yeah. and I think he put. Two or three hundred dollars on the bunny suit. Good. Okay. Or you could get Marty's launch awesome. processor Lockheed uh, uh, jacket that he wore in the launch control on, in, on launch day. On launch day, Marty, tell us a little bit about your jacket there. How many how many launches was that in? I have no idea. Well, you you wrote them down. I think it was over a dozen. Yeah, I forget. And uh, that's a uh, that's way cool. And that badge is a uh, uh, launch operations. It's LSOC. It's what? It's called LSOC. LSOC. Launch space operations. Okay. Was that Lockheed Martin? Yes. Back yeah. back when Lockheed Martin was the yeah. uh, main uh, contractor there. That's way cool. Now you and I won't be wearing this, okay? <laughs> but because uh, 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 it's a small, but uh, Martin. Medium. Medium. It's a medium. Okay, Marty. It's a medium. Oop. And uh, I think there's a two to four hundred dollar on that one. There. Awesome. All right, but you can own that, wear it around, take a picture. We'll put you on Stay Curious in either Marty's uh, uh, jacket that was. Uh, you didn't wear jackets very much, Marty. I'll bet. So that's probably one of the few jackets that you wore. Uh, launched for these. Everyone in Florida is polo shirts. Yeah. And casual clothes, or your bunny suit, or. The My closeout uniform. crew uniform that you see yeah. him wearing in this picture. Okay, folks. And that name tag, I'm pretty sure, has flown in space. All right. The name tag on it has flown in space. So uh, uh, in our auction, uh, you can bid on things right now. Uh, bid again auctions is Chuck Jeffrey's company. Uh, we will sell 400 lots. We will collect $200,000 or more. Wow. And uh, we get to keep uh, eh, maybe thirty to fifty thousand of that because we work deals with him to, yeah. and other people that can sign things. But things that you just give us, uh, uh, we we make a hundred percent on. So good. December, uh, March fifth. Yes, you may come down to the museum and see it live, or you can go to our website. It will be live and broadcast. Not on Facebook. We might do a, a blurb on Facebook. Well, uh, cool. uh, on um, let me get my glasses here and refresh Triple T's memory that STS-75, which was the tethered satellite mission, and our good friend Andy Allen, the commander of that mission, uh, and Andy's done a show on Stay Curious. Uh, his nickname Slick, by the way, mm -hmm. his Top Gun nickname was Slick. Uh, it was launched February 22nd, all right, uh, it was a morning launch, I think, in 1996. Wow, wow. that was that's a little for peace and time there. And uh, the uh, I know, and we know, Mar like I've said before, he doesn't remember all 355 people he's boarded in the shuttle. Yeah. But here's your crew cutting up a little bit. This <laughs> they, they they let out from the payload bay this device that had a, a thick wire on it, not that thick actually. Right. It's less than three eighths of an inch. 20 miles long to generate electricity. Yeah. The first time they did it, it broke. And this was the redo of it. 
uh, uh, and uh, the reflight was marred by its loss on day three when the tether broke on this. Oh, the first time they couldn't get it out further, and it was some stupid mistake where somebody didn't pull a pin uh, and it, 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 it uh, and no one could do a space to go out there and do it and this one actually broke but it generated electricity look at the crew here uh cutting up on their launch day and remember sharon mcdougall yeah. told us about how much fun these were hi sharon if you're watching yeah and then the, they they had like silly putty or silly <laughs> string <laughs> string that they string. when we interviewed andy I had Jessica shoot silly string at, at me there. But um, that was a mission there with uh, Scott Horowitz, pilot, to Ch Franklin Chang Diaz was on that. Yeah. Uh, Marzio Chile, uh, European astronaut. Jeffrey Hoffman, he flew quite a few times. Uh, he's up there on the left. Uh, Claude Nicolier and Umberto Gu uh, Guidoni. Okay. All right. <laughs> Guidoni. Uh, it was a European uh, joint mission here. We also had S. But you remember anything about those people? There I remember or? Franklin is just the most brilliant person I've ever been in a room with. He was just way. Well, Story Musgrave would probably argue about yeah, that. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah, but yeah. No, really, he was <laughs> he's tied for seven flights with Jerry Ross. Yeah. Uh, okay. I remember the silly string being the suit text being pissed off because it. <laughs> Stuck to everything. Oh, did it? Well, that would be Sharon McDougall and her yeah, friends there. her crew. Yeah. She was flipping out uh, when yeah. uh, Melvin had his dogs in there. Yeah. Because uh, she was worried about them scratching up the suits and stuff. Yeah. And then we had STS-133. Before we get into that, to get you more engaged, uh, I've got a poster here that is the FOD poster. All right. KSC... Foreign object debris, foreign object damage. There's a lot writing on it. This was a winning sign slogan by Cindy Oates of Lockheed. You would occasionally have contests to do yeah, posters. They tell, did. tell us about that and tell us about the foreign object debris rituals. We had we had a FOD walk down every day at the pad so that people we'd walk the whole stack down and check for stuff that's not supposed to be there so then it's foreign object debris so that's what you want to you know not have so uh, we'd have a walk down every day at the pad they do it in the OPFs too uh, orbiter processing facilities but it was a big deal at the pad mm -hmm. well I've sit, watched some slow motion pictures and there's actually a picture of a frog flying across yeah. the screen. <laughs> but, but you'll see some stuff fly up there. But why was that important? Well, you don't want any loose foreign objects, right? Because once the rocket, once the engines start, stuff will blow around. And hurt the da damage the tile yeah, was hurt one of the biggest concerns. That tile took or damage. foam coming off. But yeah. So... Uh, all right, we got so STS-133, the last flight of Discovery, which we've got the beautiful bird and launching right yeah. here behind us here. Uh, thank you, Mark Usiak, for that photograph. Here's a photograph that uh, I found online. Uh, left to right there, you've got. Uh, uh, let me get the astronauts in order there. Uh, that is. Um, Thank you, America. This was taken up on the, the 90... Uh, what, what level would that have been taken on? Probably, probably. 215, I'm thinking. You've got Michael Barrett on the left. You've got uh, uh, Andrew... Alvin Drew was the last African-American to go to space in 2011 right. until Victor Glover did uh, nine years later in 2010 uh, as part of the Crew Dragon uh, Okay, two. Try, okay. Uh, you've got... Uh, next to Alvin is... Uh, 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 Eric Bow, yeah. and then Steve Lindsay's the commander. Eric Bow, no, not not Eric, uh, Steve Lindsay's commander. Michael Barrett. Okay, I told you over there. Steve Bowen. Which one's Bowen on the right uh, or the left? I can't really tell from those here. three guys look so much alike. Steve Bowen, Triple T, was on STS one thirty two. And then he gets on 133, the only astronaut to go back to back, back missions. To back. Okay, and that was because of I an astronaut named uh, uh, 
Boeing became the first to fly uh, two consecutive missions. Then Doug Hurley did it, SGS 135, and then the Crew Dragon. Right. Uh, Tim Copra was injured in a bicycle accident, and he was supposed to be part of this crew. Right. And then he was replaced by Bowen. And uh, then Copper, though, don't feel sorry for him. I think he ended up having over 160 days in space <laughs> on an expedition mission. He finally got to space <clears throat> there. But uh, do you remember any of that? Not really. You know, that was... Or deja stuff. vu again. What and are you doing back up here? You're I, yeah, long I mission. remember, you know, if I just saw him on the last launch, you know, I remember that part. But it, it was above my pay grade. You know, I didn't have anything to do with it. I just put in whoever showed up. But 133, to me, this was the beginning of the end. Mm-hmm. So I knew this was my last three launches. Mike Leinbach, the launch director, wanted his best people up there, so I chose my best closeout crew guys, and so I did every last 133, 134, and 135, and I had basically the same team, because we were the best trained, so uh, 133 to me was the beginning of the end. I knew it was all coming to an end. Yeah, and that's a sad uh, moment to, to realize yeah. that. There's two more to go. And uh, yeah. So what was it like in that, that, uh, that day, uh, uh, you know, t- 11 years ago? Well, uh, you're still trying to do the best job you can, you know, and the best thing. And you're, you're also kind of wanting to remember some of it. You know, but uh, you got to get it done. You got a time limit, so it was all by the book. You know? And it was also uh, the next to last or, or third to the last flight for Marty and for, people like that all yeah. over the space center. Yeah. You know, uh, and I I applaud uh, our stay curious listeners uh, the fact that these people uh, the work the Kennedys the, the workers worked their best. Okay, right to the very end. And we had Mike Leinbach here talking about that before, that nobody, uh, uh, they knew that lives were at stake going to space, so there was no sour grapes. There was everybody just kind of knew that they had to do the best still that they did. And I really commend the workforce for doing that because the the missions were were always stellar uh, towards the end. Had to pay attention to detail. Mm -hmm. Marty, we got a comment? Yeah, Mark Usiak said the launch photo was made from the BAB roof. So oh, really? Yeah. 24 foot up, best seat in the house. That's All right. I there. didn't fail to mention that. 524 feet up on the VAB. And did you know Mark Usiak was the first photographer to go on top of the VAB? Really? Yes. No, I did not yes. know that. Yes, he, he inquired about it. And then uh, uh, we're going to have... Really? Uh, yeah, we're going to have uh, Hugh, uh, uh, the voice of NASA, Hugh... I was going to talk about that. I didn't Hugh think you Hugh were, Harris. Hugh Harris. I didn't. The voice th- of NASA. I thought you weren't allowed on the roof on launch day. Well, I wasn't. I we will hear that from yeah. Mark Usiak and his brother Tom when we have him here in our Stay Curious cool. uh, seats here inside of our Hyatt Place studios. Now that's pretty cool. Thanks huh? to Hyatt Place, it's a ver- uh, for uh, uh, sponsoring us. Really, I got to go to the roof one time, and I couldn't move a foot away from the door. Oh, really? As soon as I got there, I froze, and I'm like, No way, no, okay. you're up in that white room, 195 feet up, and that got you're to you. are on top huh? of the VAB. I'm like, okay, I've seen it, been there, done that, I'm done, let's <laughs> go. 195 foot compared to 450 foot. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's I couldn't right move, outside the door, I couldn't huge. move a foot from it. I wow. couldn't. Well, and there was people walking there. right up to the side and looking over, and I'm like, ah, I gotta go, I'm done. Well, beautiful <laughs> shot from the VAB, look at that. Uh, uh, you know, that's now, and cool. most of that is steam, folks. That's steam from the right. the sound suppression system. That's although those uh, SRBs are pretty smoky. And uh, uh, cool. there we have Alvin Drew in the cupola up there. Sorry, that's a little fuzzy picture there. Uh, and there we had a wonderful talk uh, with Carlton Bailey. Hi, Carlton. There yeah. he is, uh, Godzilla shirt on. That's his rig to take photos of the last launch. That's the the media bus that, yeah. that took them all out there. Bluebird. And uh, go check out our 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 conversation with Carlton Bailey Wednesday. 
uh, look at some great launch photographers and just hear from a great guy that uh, the, the UCX and him bonded over yeah. at Kennedy Space Center and become friends for over 30 years. Yeah, that's way uh, cool. And that's what us shutterbugs do. We love talking about <laughs> that uh, kind of stuff. And there is uh, Mike, uh, yeah. the launch director of Leinbach with Nicole Stott after the landing of this. And what he has in his hand there is uh, the cover that was over the, let me put that away, the cover that you see here in the picture on the hatch. door, on the hatch up in the white room has Endeavor on it. That's because we show this proudly here in our space museum is the actual cover that was on Discovery on yep. the hatch. Okay. Yep. And I have it right here in front of us. And at the top is the crew signed it. Steve Lindsay, Bo on, on all the way down. Nicole Stott's there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me, I didn't think about this. Being I like had that, to. But there they are right there. And yeah. at the bottom is your closeout crew. Correct. There's Travis's signature on it. All yeah. the way one through seven there. One through seven on the guys. Yeah. Okay. So I had the crew sign it right as they went, right before they climbed in the ship. Uh -huh. And then when the launch was over, I went to the firing room and presented it to Mike Leinbach, the launch director. And we had a conversation with Mike, and then we had uh, a, a book signing with uh, uh, Jonathan. Jonathan Ward here with Mike, and you and the three of you were on a panel. And uh, Mike showed up the next day, uh, that Friday, next Friday, to be yeah. on and kind of bombed our <laughs> Stay Curious program. And he had all three of these framed yeah. like this. They were in his home, and he gave Ten them years. to the museum. Gave yeah. them to the museum. We got, we got Atlantis and Endeavor over there, right, right in our shuttle uh, That's gallery. 133, 134, and 135. So and the last Mike, three. thank you very much. He gave this to him saying of all the, the swag and memorabilia handed him over his illustrious career, these were his favorite things yeah. and were near his fireplace on, I on like the wall. That. And I here like they are that. at the American Space Museum. Yeah, come For see all him. of you to come and enjoy, enjoy tour, a tour with Travis, uh, yeah. you can call up and request a tour with Travis. Okay. And he'll have his little tin cup out there with the pencils <laughs> and, at the end of the tour there. But, uh, but no, we, we appreciate all that you do. And uh, there's always good karma associated with yeah. it, my friend, because I'm living proof of that. I'm I had guys it. in here today from Pennsylvania that they own a brewery. So we made buddies. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, the UCX are in Lancaster. Where was he I at? don't, you know, I, I don't remember. He just said they were not. You know, they were in Pennsylvania, so I don't know. Well, celebrating the end of this mission is, is not fun, or the whole space shuttle program. That was, that was uh, you know, uh, 11 years ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's still close to the bone for a lot of people here, but the, the, all the, the Brevard County has sprung back. And incredibly, isn't yeah, it? Isn't it? You, I think you so. lived here, you saw it go down where the real estate, yeah. a $200,000 house, 10, 000, 10 years ago, or five, seven years ago, you could have bought it for half. Yeah, yeah. And and, and now that $200,000 house is $300,000. Yeah. So, uh, well, hi to some of our friends out there. You see we got Carlton watching and okay, uh, Ophelia. Good. Ophelia's oh, good. probably got a crush on you over nah, there in Normandy, France. I would love to go there. And uh, Dave Stang, thank you. Humberto yeah. Lopez is in Colombia. Thank you for watching Ooh, Columbia. in Columbia. Exactly. Uh, Andrea Padrisk, uh, Jamie Rich. Uh, we got Christopher Mick and uh, looking for a snowstorm, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, I'd hate to tell you, Christopher, there in Wisconsin, but uh, I had to turn my air conditioning on this afternoon <laughs> yeah. when I went to go grab a bite yeah, before the show. 80 degrees. I didn't want to, but yeah, <laughs> I, I go, man, I need the air conditioner yeah. on. It's in the 80s here today. <laughs> and, of course, the, the, the UCAC brothers, Mark and Tom, and Mike Killian. You know Mike. You're going to get to know yeah, Mike. Is, is, is a, is a, he is a, a – the UCAC brothers are awesome, outstanding photographers, and so is Killian. He's in a class by himself with his aviation photographer. Oh, that good, has good, good. Every aviation magazine. Cool. But he gets up there. Mike Killian does. 
and does barrel rolls and all this with oh, it to, wow. to get different pictures and, and all kinds of different effects. And uh, cool. we're going to have you on, Mike. So look at your calendar there. Uh, we'll Please. get you on the, in March here coming up. Yeah. Well, we wanted to celebrate a little more with Triple T and uh, uh, talk about, um, yeah, I've got a picture of um, uh, Sharon McDougal in here. Okay. But we were showing the, the funny pictures of the astronauts, and they do these safety posters. Yeah. And another one of his, quote, girlfriends, uh, Marsha <laughs> Ivins, Marcia. was part of this crew that flew in space I love it. in February. Uh, that's the crew of 80, of, uh, uh, which crew was that? In 89, I think it was. I don't have. You got a problem a high with resin that? <laughs> and this was a poster that said, um, you know, do your job or we could die yeah. on there. And, uh so I thought that was good. But I picked these pictures of Sharon, <laughs> of, of uh, Marsha Ivins out with you as an astronaut. Yeah. And, and then as what is your number two, which uh, explain that a little bit to people. But um, this, is, this is down memory road for you, buddy, yeah. because at the end of the, the mission, uh, here you are, and I, I forgot to write down what mission that was. Um, it was a, a Mir mission, I believe. Yeah. But she was your astronaut. You always had an astronaut. Always. Uh, on launch day, only a NASA astronaut can flip switches. So I had to have a NASA astronaut on my launch team. So a lot of these women would tell you that they work for me, but I'm pretty sure it was the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I love Marsha. She and I there got along really good. she is on really the second good. crew with you. Yeah. There. And uh, apologize, I didn't write down the, the number of that crew. I barely recognize the patch there. You're in the middle. You almost like got a twin brother there with you. Yeah, and well, what's happening is they had their rally caps. So it was a scrub. It had scrubbed a couple of times. And and everybody's got the rally cap okay. on backwards. So, the, and the then it tradition launched. Tradition of baseball teams yeah. to rally so, your team back. Yep, so there. now it's launched. Launch day. Once so. again, folks, you can own his closeout crew yeah. that you're wearing right there. Yeah, right is there. In our auction on eBay, it's actually item, what is it, 330, somewhere in there. You, Marty, uh, are, are close together. Okay. Uh, so we'll be watching that for you there. But we're going to talk a little bit at the end of our program here uh, because it is a, a Black History, Black History. Month. History about one of your favorite friends and astronauts, yes. uh, Charlie Bolden. Love Charlie. And uh, Charlie Bolden uh, is from Columbia, uh, South Carolina. Uh, where's my Charlie Bolden notes? Uh, he uh -oh. is a URA. he's a Marine. Yes, sir. All right, and uh, there we are. There's my Charlie Bolden crib notes there. Columbia, South Carolina in 1946, so that makes him about 70 six years old in August. He's 75. He's a Marine like Marty. They're very close in age to each other, Marty and, and, and yeah. uh, Charles Frank Bolden Jr. Yeah. Always amazed how many astronauts are junior. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, it's not like 10%. It's not like 15%. It's like 30% or more wow. astronauts. Males are junior. And almost all the Mercury and Gemini astronauts were. Were they? Or for all the Mercury and Gemini astronauts were first born children. 90% uh, uh, of them. Hmm. Um, okay. Charlie piloted two missions, and then he was commander of two missions. Right. And then in May 2009, he became President Barack Obama's uh, administrator for NASA, the first African-American to hold that position on a permanent yeah. basis. Right. Uh, Fred Gregory was a temporary intern uh, uh, at NASA administrator. Right. And uh, he, of course, went through the Obama administration for eight years, helping transform with Bob Cabana, the Kennedy Space Center, into its private entrepreneurial Correct. cooperative, which it is with the government. It's basically a co-op of space companies out there now, with NASA only holding on to 39B for their Artemis yeah. launch pad and, and a couple other things out there, like the skid strip and so forth. Right. Um, you shake your head to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it's to me it's just I hate giving that up, you know. I yeah. hate the but Charlie was my first astronaut I ever worked with. And the, that was called your ASP, your yeah, astronaut. My ASP. Yeah. ASP stands for astronaut support personnel. Okay, but they were really 
We called them blue suiters. <laughs> but you also called them Cape Crusaders. Sea squares or Cape Crusaders. Cape Crusaders, Crusaders. Yeah, yeah, that's what Cape they were. Cape Crusaders. Uh, was the nickname you They like being there. called sea squares. So astronauts, uh, correct me, They they every astronaut came in and kind of had a, a wheelhouse of their expertise that they were given yeah, to yeah. become an expert in so they could share it with the core. Right. Because you can't learn go to every meet and learn everything. So, And he uh, was the astronaut that learned everything at Kennedy Space Center. He was one of our first, uh, he was the first one of the first on the closeout crew. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we, you know, we started early. But he lived he here and lived first. with you guys. He yeah. didn't go back to Houston all the time. Yeah, he, he did stay here. All right, so, so he, me and him got to be. He buddies. might have been at King's Duck End with you on occasion. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I'll tell you what, he will knock you out of the way to give me a hug right now. I mean, if he walked into this room, he the first thing he'd see is Travis. Well, we're trying to Come effort here. getting him on stake here. I want to see him. him involved here in some of our uh, yeah. partnerships. He's a great the, guy, and and really led us, led NASA tremendously you know african-american or not I, I just he was very he knew what we needed to do and he did took care of stuff so. here he is in the command left seat of an orbiter look at all that stuff he's got around him there to yeah. remind him they had a lot of crib notes and stuff up there yeah, didn't they definitely uh you got something taped on the on, on the bottom there and yeah uh, uh, yeah, very, very, very interesting. Little reminders. Uh, little reminders of stuff. And there's Sharon McDougall. Hi, Sharon. Hey, darling. Very, very young Sharon there when she's putting Charlie in his uniform on yeah. STS-61C, which let me consult the scroll there. 61C was uh, launched by Gene Thomas. Ooh, that's the one before Challenger. Okay. That was uh, the uh, Charlie's first mission. As a pilot, All right. and that was who Gibson was his commander, and the two Nelsons were on there, and okay. uh, but that was uh, January '86. All right, in there. So, uh, but hi Sharon, and she did a great yeah. job with a great program. Thanks to you mm -hmm. hooking us up with her. She and her husband will be here for our Cosmic Masquerade good, Ball good, in good, October. Good, good. All right, and you got to check her out on YouTube. Uh, and she's uh, got good stuff going on, and she certainly does. Steam Education, little book about. A little character that's a, a suit tech. She yeah. sews the, the, her sew, her, her needle and stuff right. she used. Yeah. But there is your buddy Charlie. Yeah. Kind of a cool shot of him there. Him. All right. And if you when you come to the, Ast the Kennedy Visitors Complex, all right, Charlie does a he uh, the shuttle ride that you take. You go in and, and you're simulated like you're in the shuttle. They even move the, yeah. the thing back. He is, is. He used to be. At least last time I saw it was the astronaut talking about talking. You know, get ready to go and all I'm that stuff. I'm in that stuff video really too. Cool. Yeah. Are you? I have to check yeah. that out. There he is. Got a beard there. Sorry about the breakup in the resolution there. God bless that don't him. look so bad. He was a cool. He guy. rocks a beard pretty good. Yeah, he does. He? he does. Yeah. yeah. So. He's got it going. <laughs> uh, well, what was I thinking of that we need to talk about? Oh, I know what we need to talk about here at the end. But uh, here's our shuttles of February. We've only got one more to go over, and that is STS-36, which is a Department of Defense DOD. mission on the last day, February 28th. And those are missions that you just don't know much about. No. Nope. And even talked to Hugh Harris, the, the uh, public information officer at that time, and said he, they, he didn't even know. He told us uh, at the beginning of the month, we're going to have Hugh back on March 3rd right. to talk about the shuttles of March. He said he was only told like an hour before that, that they were going to start to count, you know, wow. to go out and tell the press to get ready. All hmm. right. and, they, and they told him about three hours before launch. They knew the day and roughly it was going to be in this window. Right. But uh, isn't that something? You know, there? a lot of us had top security clearance. We call it a red badge. Mm-hmm. Still didn't mean you knew anything. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, you just were able to be in the same room with the same equipment, you know, and uh, but we didn't really always know what was going on. So. Well, that uh, you obviously uh, didn't know that uh, five gallons of vodka was coming your way there for the last mission yeah. of the mirror we talked about uh -huh. there. Yeah. Well, let's look at this beautiful bird, Discovery. 
uh, you stood underneath it when yep. we dedicated your. Uh, oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. When we dedicated your uniform, it's on its wheels at the Oud Barhazi Center of the Smithsonian. Correct. Uh, it is the most traveled of the shot. If we look at this beautiful photograph that Mark Usiak took from on top of the VAB, 252 crew members. All right. Wow. That's not individual people. That's 252 tickets have been punched on the. Uh, uh, wow. were, were punched on Discovery. It was a its tail number was Orbital Vehicle One O Three. Correct. I pretty much got those down pat now. <laughs> uh, it orbited the Earth five thousand eight hundred and thirty times, which, folks, is almost exactly three hundred and sixty-five days in space. Wow. The most experienced orbiter with 30, 39 missions. Cool. Three hundred and sixty-five days in space. It did. Uh, it deployed the Hubble telescope and two upgrades of it okay uh its first flight was uh in 84 and uh the miles traveled uh uh 355 individuals miles traveled is 542,000 no that's that's the whole show it has gone 148 million miles and 200,000, about 400, yeah, 148 million miles. Wow. Which uh, is from here to Mars when Mars is far away. Okay. Uh, Mars gets as close as, as uh, 37 million miles and as okay. far away as almost 200 million miles. Right. So this could have gone to Mars. But that's that's the tail of the tape there off of our shuttle scroll on cool. STS-133, which landed on... March 9th, all right, okay. uh, a 15-day mission. March 9th is where it landed at. I know I went and opened the hatch for them. I was there to open so, them and get them out. So bittersweet memories, I'm sure, buddy, because yeah. those were some good times, good paychecks. And oh, yeah. Boy, our region suffered for it big time. But the good news is it's come back strong thanks to yeah. SpaceX. Way to Blue Origin starts flying their new Glenn rocket, I'm going to tell you. Mark Usiak will be there to take pictures and it'll blow your mind who, because it's a yeah. big rocket. It is, it's a, a, a third larger than the uh, Falcon 9. It's 300, yeah. over 300 feet tall, Something. 320 feet tall, and 18 yeah. feet in diameter. Wow. And that Falcon 9 is 229 feet and I think 12 feet in diameter. Yeah. But uh, that's Jeff Bezos' new Glenn we're talking about. We'll be launching off yeah. here soon, hopefully this fall. Got a lot of new launches going this fall. Space yeah. Launch System, launch that Orion to orbit to, the moon. Yeah, I can't wait to see that. 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. Yeah. Come on, nobody's ever seen anything that big. That's going to be awesome. And we're, because the uh, the Saturn V was 7 million pounds seven of thrust. Seven and a half. And mm -hmm. we're going to see it go out to the pad probably right before uh, St. Patrick's Day. Right uh, in March there. 15th, March yeah. 16th. There's, uh, they're they're telling us Carlton I can't wait. Bailey and other I would come from there. anywhere in the world to see that. <laughs> well, you don't have to because yeah, you're just I'm ten miles here. away. Yeah, I can't right wait. here at the American Space Museum. I can't wait, it's going to so, be something. Uh, uh, Travis, good to have you back. Feeling yes, better? Sir. Is there Thank anything you, you want to share with our friends in the? I'm just State glad to world? be back. Come see us, you know, here at the museum and. Uh, good. I'll be Marty. Here we have anything to clean up for another week of Stay Curious? Yep. 300 and about 310 episodes that's folks, awesome we've done. you guys have uh, done i mean 510 episodes you guys have done but we're going to celebrate job. closer to our two, second year anniversary there so well once again i'm mark marquette and we're so glad that we've been coming to you from the hyatt place studios another uh nice uh frame shot by mark that's usiak good. there uh, this needs to be your hotel of choice when you come to the Space Coast. Okay. It is right beside US 405. It is one of the entrances to the Kennedy Visitors com Complex. Correct. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was out there uh, talking to uh, Robert and Dana, appointment with them to kind of button down this relationship. They showed me their fifth floor rocket viewing site that awesome. we'll be bringing you pictures of. And then I rode down the elevator and it stopped at the fourth floor and uh, Eileen Collins popped into the Really? Yes. Oh my lord. Uh, and I'm <laughs> like uh, uh, about to, to die. Okay. <laughs> Hell yeah. Usiak um, was with me at the time cool. there. That's when he took these pictures. But All right. So astronauts have found it and we want you to find this wonderful uh, hotel. Look yes. it up. The Hyatt Place Hotel, Titusville. 
So, cool. buddy, that about does it for us here cool, on Stay cool, cool. Curious. Uh, uh, so, you know, thank you for coming. And, yep. and uh, we've got some more catching up to do. Uh, he's always given a tour before we go on. So you did a great job with not much studio yeah. prep. Yeah. Thank you for all that you do, Marty. And until next week on Stay Curious from our Hyatt Place studios here in downtown Titusville, I'm Mark Marquette, and we will see you again to Bridge, Bridge the, the Space, space between, between Us. Come see me.